Hello. I'm back. I think. Anyone in chat? <laughs> Astonator and Attila were there. Aha. Okay. Good. Uh, this might happen again. <laughs> As I said, I was a little bit late starting the stream initially because of uh, internet issues and it just disconnected me. So, um, yeah, I think this is now going to be two. Let's figure out what I'm going to do with this. I might just start over. No, I'll keep going. <laughs> um, got to completely cut off my flow. All right. So today I'm looking at equipment for Pitchfork, um, and I've just put some really rough bits in here like this. Um, this is meant to be a rules light game. I don't want it to be focused on equipment. Equipment shouldn't really be a focus of this game. <sighs> that said, there will be future expansions I'm, I'm planning for it, which might have a little bit more in the way of equipment, like the criminal one and the mercenary one. That might be a little bit, yeah. Might be a little bit more vital to have some extra stuff around equipment, but I think setting the bones for what I want to what I want to produce later. I think I just need to keep that in my in my head. In fact, I'll probably put this here and put like design goals. Um, and I want to say I want this to be lightweight. Lightweight gear mechanics. Um, no encumbrance. Money measured in simple coinage. I want to have barter uh, mechanics. And in fact, because I'm planning on doing some bar putting a little bit of thought into bartering, um, it might even be worth thinking about having a barter skill. Because we've got haggle. Oh, haggle. That's what it was. Yeah, so we've already done it. Cool. That was last time. Haggling mechanics. Um... Hmm, examples. Based on medieval. Example weapons available to peasants. So I'm not going to be <laughs> providing example weapons um, for you know, every kind of military weapon you can imagine. Although that could be statted up with the adversaries. Um, in fact, let me just look at my adversaries and how, how I handled that because I think I did talk about this a little bit. So weapons just need a number to be assigned to them to indicate how much damage they do. That makes sense. Um, I probably want to put a little bit of thought into how I'm talking about this as well. Uh, weapons. So weapons. We're going to talk about... Um, so let's start putting this in money measured in simple coinage haggling mechanics weapons um 
traits and damage values and traits traits our narrative our narrative tags and don't have mechanics that's what I'm gonna try armor quick note to say armor is not um, say how armor works but that it is unlikely to be available to the PCs miscellaneous gear mainly price lists for items which could be of use to peasants All right, a little bit of an introduction here then. So, um, this isn't a game about loot and um, loot or survival. This isn't a game about loot or survival. About <laughs> it is a little bit about survival. It's not about wilderness survival. That's what I wanted to say. It's about village life and the horrors of being. And the horrors experienced as a peasant. I uh, got um. I want to keep this. I want to keep this relatively um tight. This isn't a game about loot or this um, survival. It's about village life, and the um. Everyday horrors relating to medieval peasants. Yeah, that will definitely be the case. Um, the thing is, weapons need to be weapons and armor need to be addressed because they will be applicable to potentially to adversaries, um, even if the PCs don't have them available. So definitely, the the sections on weapon, weapons and armor are probably only going to be a couple of paragraphs each, and then um, miscellaneous will have basically price lists. All I'm saying about haggling mechanics. So yeah. The thing is, like, this is the thing, is, like, I, I can kind of imagine coinage not really being that that available to peasants. Um, you need to think about this a bit. Focus is not on combat. I mean, you can get into combat if you need to. It depends on how the GM is running things. You could try running, um, like, a Warhammer adventure, an official Warhammer adventure, for example, using these rules, um, in which case... Very well could be a lot of combat. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm including a default way of playing. The, the rules are meant to be for a certain type of play, but I am keeping in the back of my mind that um, people may want to play other settings with it that don't necessarily have such a focus like this. They might want to try and hack it a bit to, to do more, and that's fine. Um, but yeah. The combat mechanics that are in this game are going to be the same combat mechanics that are going to be in the future expansions that are going to be a little bit more combat heavy or combat focused. Um, so it's important that I do, you know, I do provide some rules for it. So anyway, 
Um, this means that equipment is mostly about this means that um, equipment <laughs> rephrase this this means that um, what your character has on them is much less important than typically seen in most oh god As a result, um, mechanics relating to equipment are designed to be lightweight. As stated in page XX there are no rules for encumbrance instead um, common sense should be applied in terms of what a character has on them Currency in Pitchfork is measured. In silver shillings. These can be separated. Trade and commerce. Uh, this is a book called The Marketplace by Philip McGregor, Australian chap, um, who did this game called, or this source book called Orbus Mundi 2, um, which I kickstarted at the full full level, which gave me at cost um, um, at cost printing codes for all of his books. I've got four of them now, which is the full set. And the second one was called Marketplace, and it's basically um, a guide to, a very very detailed guide to prices of, it's like a price list for the medieval, the medieval um, age, the Middle Ages. Um, it goes into a lot of detail, it talks about coinage, it talks about, yeah, everything relating to trade and the economy and commerce, that sort of thing. Um, it does have a big section here on coinage, and I wanted to look at this because, um, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to come up with a name for, you know, sh for the coins on either side of the shilling. Um, to kind of pick something that's roughly Germanic and not necessarily English. Um, but yeah, it was the pound, the pfund, German, it was equal to two marks. And then there were pfennig, pennies. Um, <laughs> German coinage. So the shilling was definitely one. It's we've got a C in there. It's spelled exactly the same, but it's S C H at the front. Um, was worth 12 pennies, or pfenny, pfenning, I think it was pfennig, I'll have to look that up actually, um, 
Then there was a gold coin in the from the 14th century called the Golden, uh, which is spelled like golden but with an, a U instead of an O. Often somewhat misleading, translated as Gilder. Rhein Golden. And they were so uh, that was well, that was a gold coin. Um, when they were originally issued, they were. I oh, know they're always golden. So, some other names then, and that could be used instead of um, shilling. But I mean, I like the term. I like the term crown. Because there's going to be a bit of Nordic influence in this game, and the the Scandinavian um, countries had Kona, which is basically means crown. Um, so I'm kind of thinking I might want to go with something similar. Um, I believe in German. I should probably check this, but I, um, let me check Lingue. But I believe crown is um, is also Krona in German. Yeah, Krona. Um, Alte Deutsche um, Münzen Krone Aha Look at this, we've got German crowns called Krone Gold and <laughs> 1857, way past um, when I need him, unfortunately. So, Marks. Marks, 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 marks. Who cares? I care. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just seeing that now. Um, I mean, this is a kind of an important thing. It has a lot of flavor in terms of how these things work. Um, we've got this these Groschen as well. Uh, we'll there a little bit later. So that's fine. I mean, I've got, I've got, like, I've got the names of of silver coins that were used around the 14th century, um, and that's absolutely fine. It's good enough for me. Um, yeah. Currency in pitchfork is um, so. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna spell that out here. Um, one krona equals. Ah, God. <laughs> uh, they should have. It should be here somewhere. Right. <sighs> Sorry, I know this isn't very fun to watch right now. Fuck it, we're just gonna do gonna go with something. For now, I'll look into this and probably tweak it a little bit. Uh, one crown is gonna be equal to, let's say, 20 shillings. Um, which is equal to... May as well just do the, the standard. Um, 
bin ich. It's gonna be really hard to say. So Fennec is So Fennec is is what they're called actually. So you can see here there's what there's one with a G I G on the end, here's one with an I N G on the end. Um yeah, it was the official currency from the ninth century until the introduction of the of the euro. Um, Eighteen seventy one. A minor coin of the mark currencies. So I think we we're gonna ignore ignore the mark for now. Yeah. I'm just gonna stick with Fennec for now. Again, I might be changing a lot of these. So I'm using I'm using Warhammer um, coin values, which should be um, which probably a lot of Warhammer fans will be happy to see, and some of them won't be. Um, <laughs> so uh, one golden krona equals twenty. Silver shillings equals 240. Um, I think there was silver as well. Yeah. So even in the eighth, from the eighth century, these were all um, made out of silver. It was made from real silver at a high value. From the 12th century on, the name of the force that. Uh, Made their own coins, mostly less valuable metals, usually copper, and less metal per coin was used, so different had different values. White pennies and black pennies with a high content of copper and little silver or no silver at all. So we're gonna go with copper, I think. Um, so not silver. All right. Currency in pitchfork uh, is measured in shillings. Haggling, Jesus. Um, what am I doing here? <laughs> I've had a lot of ideas about haggling and how I wanted to cover it, but um, yeah, I think I need to come back to it. But I'll put down some of the main points though. Um, so barter should always be possible when trading for goods. If something is being offered, which is roughly, which is of roughly equal worth, and that the seller would could potentially um, need or be able to sell on the trade should simply be made if the seller is not if for any reason no if the trade is not of equal value um, players PCs should roll their should roll haggle Modified by a variety.
variety of factors, including sellers. Um, what's the term for reaction? Not reaction. It's there. The sellers. Um, how somebody feels about you. <coughs> including the sellers. Um, it's not demeanor. Oh, I feel a bit tired today. Disposition. That's what I'm looking for. Just double check that. Yeah. You know I'm going to say disposition, disposition towards someone. But the, the seller's disposition. Um the scale of the imbalance in the trade, etc. Rather than provide lots of tables and rules for this, the GM should approximate whether the trade Approximate the tr um, the level of difficulty from the perspective of the PC, and then either provide additional dice in the case if the roll or increase the difficulty. The result of this roll can be determined on the table below. One success equals um, trade will be trade made with a concession of some kind. Required number of successes. Additional success, two or more additional successes. Trade made as trade made as. Two plus additional successes mean um, trade made at a substantial uh, it's not rate um, bonus, I guess. The reason I'm saying this required number of successes and one additional success, instead of just saying one success, two successes, three plus successes, 
um, is that the difficulty in this game adds, like if, if something is difficult, it's going to be, or if the difficulty is increased, it's going to be two or three successes required to be able to, to be able to succeed. Um, and that could be the case here. So it could be that you're, you're being very, very cheeky. You're trying to, you're trying to haggle in a way that you should really not be able to haggle and as a result you've got like three you need three successes to be able to, to successfully haggle uh, to successfully make the trade um, it might be that you don't have much in your haggling skill you might only have a haggling skill of one or two there might be some advantages that are giving you extra dice um, but maybe you're only rolling three dice and you need to get three sixes on those dice to be able to succeed at the haggle um, that would mean the minimum, the maximum you'd be able to do would be to get this one, a trade made with a concession of some kind. So you, you've made the trade, but you've got a, there's some sort of success. I mean, it, it just feels a little bit clunky. I'm not really happy with this necessarily. Um, but it needs, it needs, um, playtesting. So this is kind of what I had this is kind of what I've had in my mind. Um, it's based a little bit around the Mutant Year Zero solo rules I was using, um, but also around Coriolis and how Coriolis handles um, partial successes and critical successes, etc. Um, I just thought of something. each um, and a fish modifier and increase the difficulty depending on negative modifiers. So this is very specifically saying you will get additional dice when things are in your favor. I'm going to put here, including help from other characters. What did I say about help, actually? get plus one so I'm basically saying you can help can be used for haggling um, yeah so pri uh, currency the standard value um, the standard unit of currency and pitchfork is shillings. Most all equipment, I don't know what's that. The majority of equipment will be listed in shillings. Unless very expensive. Very cheap. Okay. interested to see how um, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay handles these roles. These rules, I mean. Um, what about personality, Attila?
consumer's guide. 293 <laughs> Sorry, it was on a roll. Um Personality affecting haggling, maybe. That's probably what we're talking about. Yeah, so this basically doesn't really just go straight into all the um, weapon traits or qualities, as they call them here. Oh. Okay. Uh, weapons and pitchfork. Most weapons that peace peace will see are tools which um, are being repurposed. Um, for fighting. Um, should PCs wish to purchase weapons, actual weapons, um, they can use the price list below. This is a cut down version tailored to what would what could be expected in a rural expected to be available in a rural village. Huge section of weapons in here. There's some really good ones. A quick look at this. The armory. Armor. Weaponry. All right. So I'm actually gonna open this as a PDF so people can follow along and see what's see what's what. Uh, so we're gonna go to GMing. Monday. <coughs> ah, miscellaneous, there we go. But too many subfolders. I'm just trying to find this. There it is. Here it is. Marketplace. All right. Weaponry. All right. So, axes, war axes, T 
two-handed axe. So you'd have um, you'd have a light axe. So we could say axe, light. We'd have an axe, long-handled, which would be the two-hand the two-handed axe. Um, bows. No arbalests. No bolts. No composite bows, I don't think. Composite long bows are for infantry archers and are too long to use on horseback. Composite short bows are short enough to use on horseback and are mostly used by cavalry. But that's not really what peasants would use. They wouldn't use crossbows either. Um, long bows, potentially, yes. And short bow, a self bow shorter than the long bow. We're talking really short bows, right? So we're going to go with short bow. I'm not sure that's the right term for it, but um, I'll go like that. Bow short. Clubs. So a cudgel. You'd definitely be able to find a cudgel. We need, um, we don't want maces, but we do want, and that's it for cudgels and maces. We do want hammers. Um, hammers are important because there's going to be a hell of a lot of different types of um, hammers being used. So we're going to go with a cudgel. We're going to go with a hammer. Um, we'll call this a light hammer, and we'll call this a heavy hammer. And then we'll go with a sledge. So the idea here is that a light hammer would be, if I, if I pull up the artwork for um, pitchfork. You see right here, we've got a stone cutter. She's swinging a hammer. This would be what I would consider that's kind of just a standard hammer. I'm gonna do it between light and heavy. I'm gonna go with um, just hammer, hammer or sledge. Um, hammer being what like a yeah, what uh, as like a tool. Um, so what a smith would use, what a stone cutter would use, that sort of thing. Also, you can find hammers being used by um, carpenters as well. Medieval tools, hammer. They even had claw hammers in the 15th century. Look at that. There's one there on the floor. Hmm, interesting. Mallet there. So maybe we should use the term mallet. Um, oops. A lot of um, a lot of evidence evidence here for large mallets being used, which are basically what I'm calling a um, sledgehammer. Oh. Some of these mallets are have a wooden head, it looks like. Yeah, a wooden hammer. Yeah, I don't want to go down too... Uh, it's the thing is, I don't want to go down too many rabbit holes with um, specifying different types of hammers. So we're going to say here, um, hammer, light, hammer, heavy. And we'll go here, hammer... Go here with a mallet. Wooden mallet. Okay. 
Let's move on. Um, they won't be able to buy maces. I don't think even light maces like this. It's just not something you'd be able to buy as a peasant. Um, daggers. No, but certainly knives. Like most of these daggers are going to be in a later supplement, right? Criminals are going to be using um, stilettos, and there'll be all sorts of daggers being used by the um, mercenaries in that later, in the later planned expansion. So for this one, it's going to be um, knife. No swords. Can't see swords being used. Um, although theoretically you could get your hands on a cleaver, which would be like a almost like a falchion. Um, you know, a big chopper, a big chopper. But I don't see like how are these gonna be uh I mean yeah. I'm going to a lot of detail here, right? I don't really want to didn't really want to list a lot of stuff. This is more for just um ideas for prices. Um, spears. I mean, you could definitely get your hands on spears. <laughs> An angon. Or what kind of? I don't know what kind of um, pole arms I want to put in here. To be honest. Certainly a quarterstaff. And spetum, pike, nope. So I think we're gonna go with just a spear, simple spear. Um, but you could buy one if potentially if you need one. Spear, short, spear, long, staff. I've got all the costs here. Should be writing these down. Half, half a penny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll have to round that up. Right. I'm gonna go back a bit. I think knives. Knives aren't even on here. Daggers certainly would cost more than what I'd expect. So a cudgel would cost the same. Right. So we're gonna go with uh, quarter staff. One P. Um, cudgel. One P. And that sounds really cheap, but I'm just writing down what's kind of historically accurate, and then I might probably. Um, Adapt that from there. Oh, we got different prices depending on whether we're looking at D and D or looking at Rune Quests. Brilliant. Um, I'm gonna go with Rune Quest because in Mithras because it's probably a little bit more accurate. One to two shillings. Two S. Two shillings. I don't know big differences on those other ones though. Um, longbow, nope. Closet bows, nope. Nope, 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 nope. Axes, two handed axes. Yeah, alright. Put up the three. Put up the four, actually. Round it up. The light axe would be this light axe here, I guess. Two to three shillings. Jesus, it's not very much. Um. Hmm. Oh, one shilling. Yeah. Okay. I'll check hammers and stuff. There's another section on tools, which has got weights and stuff for it. I'll look at that later. 
Um, spears. Wow. Not expensive. So for this, we'll probably say a short spear is 6p. A long spear is... shilling so it's like half a shilling one shilling one just seems too low we'll put it at two yeah okay let's keep going uh, pikes we didn't look at quarter staffs we've already looked at uh, what's not available doesn't exist they don't appear until the 15th century right so this is actually um, I didn't realize this was only up to the, like the 14th century, mainly from the 13th to 14th centuries. Aha. Okay. Spike fells never existed. Fine. Hammers and picks were not separate weapons. They had a hammerhead with a pointed pick blade. Yeah, but that's I'm not looking at this. So this is really what I really want to look at is um some D and D bullshit in there, which I don't really want to look at. Maintenance, damage, there's a lot of information in there, so we're gonna ignore that for now. Um, so I'm gonna look at the tools section, because there's some cool stuff in there I'd like to look at. after the weapons maybe gear camping gear farms and farming hardware and tools there we go that's what we want 185 whoa okay there we go let's find some prices for some stuff Hardware and tools, blacksmith's tools, smith's hammer. Oh, quite expensive. General purpose smithing hammer. Weighs five pounds. Two and a half kilos. Okay. I'm saying one, one and a half shillings. So we're gonna, I'm gonna bump that up a bit to. Two shillings. Now that's the lowest I'm going here. So we'll go to two shillings here and we'll go with three shillings for a heavier mallet uh, hammer. And the mallet is probably all wood, is probably going to be just two. Um, Okay, then we have carpenter's tools and adds or adds a I'm sure you pronounce that. Um, out an auger, bow drill, brace, bit drill, carpenter's rule, carpenter square, chisel, carpenter's hammer. What about there? Yeah, I mean, I don't even know why I'm providing prices for all this stuff. Um, what I could probably do is just look at things like things like this. Let's let's take this a different a different route here. Um, simple tools like um, hammers, staffs, uh, hammer. Simple tools like. Simple hardware tools, 
would cost anywhere in the region of two, no, would cost in the region of two pennies to two shilling. <laughs> Simple weapons, uh, heavier or more um, specialist tools would cost you from one shilling to up to say four shillings maybe five shillings something like that simple weapons would cost between one shilling to Shillings. Probably going to start something like six shillings up to two crown, two krona. That should do. I'm not sure about giving um, weapons traits. Like, yeah, I'm just gonna ignore it. It's just gonna be something simple like that. So most weapons that PCs will see are tools which are being repurposed, um, which are repurposed for fighting. Should PCs wish to purchase actual weapons, they can use the price. Um, they can use the guidelines below. This is a cut down version tailored to what could be expected. A full equipment list might, <laughs> will possibly be included in the full rule set. <laughs> um, the only thing that needs to be tracked for each weapon the amount of damage dealt. Use the guidelines below to help to come up with these on the fly. So simple or simple or improvised. Weapons, one damage. Um, light weapons. Uh, one handed. One handed weapons of war, two damage. Two-handed weapons of war, three damage. Um, ex uh, master crafted, master crafted weapons of war. Right. Oops. A 
example. I've already given some examples previously, haven't I? Some Muppet examples. You'd have knife one, um, hammer one. Sword two, bow, two handed. Two hand of war axe three. That's not really this isn't really in line with other um, free league games. For example, Forbidden Lands. I'm just gonna look very quickly at Forbidden Lands because I'm a little bit out of out of sync with that. Which I think is okay, because I want this to be maybe a little bit more deadly, but I think I might I don't necessarily want to be breaking something like this because I'm using their system for a lot of these things. So if we look here, here's the melee weapons for Free League. Um, the only things that have three damage are heavy war hammers, a two-handed axe, and a two-handed sword. Literally the only things on this list, right? They're the big, heavy, two-handed melee weapons, not pole arms. So that actually works here with the two-handed two war axe. And we have the two-handed... Um, I mean, I could call it Svayenda. <laughs> I could call it what it was actually called. Oh god, the armor. We're not even looking at armor. This war axe. Two-handed axe. What was this one? Um, the two-handed hammer wasn't really in there. Uh, what was the other thing I wanted to look at? Swords. Sword, 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 sword. Falcon. Knight sword. Hand and a half sword. Two-handed sword. Calling him a two handed sword. I mean, it's the same as what, um, named or master crafted weapons of war for damage. That'll do. Give, I mean, it should be pretty easy to come up with what they, um, you know, what they are. Okay. Um, the other thing that makes this a lot simpler than Forbidden Lands is there's no bonus for weapons. It's just straight up. Um, oh, or did I want to do weapon them or weapon bonuses? Something I have been cons I have been flip flopping on a little bit. Um, if I go to the settings section or this sorry the skill section here, building the pool. If a piece of gear can be used for a roll, gain dice equal to its bonus value. So I am talking about having a bonus value for gear, but I'm not necessarily meaning it for weapons. Fuck it. No, no, we're gonna make this. We're gonna simplify this down. Like massively. Ah, 
But I do want, I do want to be able to add. bonuses I mean the idea behind the bonuses is that you get one two or three bonus uh, plus one two or potentially three but it's really just a one or a two and the way I should probably I should probably allow this and just say um, all weapons give a bonus of one dice but weapons <laughs> weapons of war would give two but see you've got like a club and a flail only give a one a staff only gives a one a short spear only gives a one a trident only gives a one then we get over to these weapons a heavy crossbow does three damage um but one bonus this is where i probably would con would consider creating an equipment list in um in the actual pitchfork because i want to keep it i want to kind of keep it loose at the moment so i think i'm going to do the same i'm going to say here bonus Um, all weapons, uh, all weapons provide at least one bonus die to an attack roll. If a weapon is made for warfare, it provides two bonus dice to an attack roll. This is written with the weapon. B. This is written as a number with the letter B next to the weapon. The amount of damage dealt is based, is likewise based on whether a weapon is designed for warfare. This is written as a number with the letter D. Might be examples. Knife, bonus one, damage one. Hammer, bonus one, damage one. Short bow, bonus one, damage one. Oh, damage two. Long sword, bonus two, damage two. Longbow, bonus two, damage two. Two-handed war axe, bonus two, damage 
three, two-handed sword, bonus two, damage three. There we go. Knife, hammer. What I should probably change this is actually adding like a staff. Short bow, long bow, long sword, two handed sword. Yeah. Hello, hello. Doing equipment. Half an hour left on the stream, roughly. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I think that's I think that's where I want to go here. Um, might just highlight this bit here. Armor. Most PCs in Pitchfork will not be wearing armor. There are a few exceptions. Um, Smiths. Is it over here? Let's see. Leather apron. And thick clothing. There are a few exceptions. Leather aprons, thick clothing, which provide a small amount of protection. Hello, hello, Diesel Shot. We've got Danielle Long and Diesel Shot joining. How's it going? Um. So the armor roll. Anytime a character is dealt damage, an armor roll is made before the damage is inflicted. For each success, An armor, an armor roll is made before the damage is inflicted. Um, made up of a number of dice equal to the armor's rating. God, this is really dry. I apologize, but it is what it is. For each success rolled, one point of incoming damage is cancelled. Here, uh, here's a list of, here is a, what was I putting it before? I was calling it a guideline. There we go. Use the guidelines both to come up with armor ratings on the fly. All right. Simple. Arm, uh, simple padded armor. AR1. Okay. Just wanted to be referencing this Orbis Monday 2 again. So we've got mail, plates. I mean, no one's going to be wearing plate, really. Um, lamellar, I believe, is like scale mail. 
Uh, rectangular plates of metal laced onto heavy cloth overlapping. Yep. Lamellar armor was rarely, if ever, found in use in most of Western Europe, but was common in parts of Eastern Europe, especially in Muscovy and in the East Roman Empire and the Middle East in general. Um, I mean, I could have that still. A jack. So we've got gambesons, which are um, quilted, quilted um, like jackets. Plate, mail, helms, stiffened linen. Shields. All right, 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 all right. Let's use forbidden lands as a guide again. Armor ratings here. Um, I mean, leather armor wasn't really a thing in in history. Um, Leather didn't really. Uh, this is <laughs> how realistic do I want to make this? That's the big question. Um, yeah. So simple padded armor, simple padded or leather armor, we'll say, gives you an arm rating of one. Um, Mail shirt of mail. Yeah, but um, I mean it's kind of the same as leather, right? Leather or hide. Let me just put here leather or hide armor. It's wearing like furs or something. Um, although I think furs were actually quite were a bit better. I had this big conversation um, with some. Um, he